Ni hao, wo jiao, Gabe Klassen, and this is Liao Shu, the six scripts of the Chinese writing system. China was one of the world's earliest sites of civilization, so it can only follow that its history is as deep and rich as it is long, with the Chinese language being no exception. Throughout the many thousands of years during which the Chinese people wrote their language down, they were faced numerous times with the question of how they could fully develop their language. This ultimately resulted in the formation of six scripts, Liao Shu, of the Chinese language. These six different types of characters can help anyone better understand the history and even the ingenuity that went into the creation of Chinese. The first Chinese characters created, and perhaps the most iconic, were pictographs, or xiangxing. These are characters which literally represented a facet of the physical world through drawing. For example, the character for tree, Mu, evolved from a crude picture of a tree, and the character for mountain, Shan, originated from a rudimentary drawing of a mountain. Of course, being only able to write about literal objects is a bit limiting, which is why ideographs were also created. This script, Zhi Shi, was comprised of characters which represented more abstract concepts, such as verbs, adjectives, numbers, or ideas. The concept of three is not a physical object, but the Chinese still embodied it with three horizontal lines. Similarly, largeness could not actually be seen with the eyes, so instead an image of a man outstretching his arms was used, conveying the meaning of something big. Not all ideas could be represented this way, as at a certain point they would have to become garishly complicated. The solution was to combine characters so as to reduce the number of unique patterns used in the writing system, giving rise to compound ideographs, huiyi, formed out of multiple characters, which have a much more diverse range. With some, the meaning is evident, such as the character for forest, consisting of two trees. Others are not so obvious, such as the character for male, it has two radicals, or semantic components, field and strength, which together give the idea that men are strong and work in the fields, the sort of gender roles associated with the sex at the time. These three scripts, pictographs, ideographs, and compound ideographs, however, only form a tiny fraction of the total Chinese lexicon. The vast majority of characters are actually xingsheng, or of a phono-semantic nature, that is, they have a part which represents pronunciation and a radical which represents meaning. A good example of this is one, the character for mosquito. On the left side of the character is the radical, the pictograph for insect, chong. The component on the right originally meant tattoo, but it does not contribute any meaning. Instead, it remains only to provide us with the pronunciation, one. Another character formed this way represents the idea of a stripe, its phonetic component is also one, which, once again, provides no meaning. The actual meaning is in the radical to the left, which historically means thread, the same sort of long, thin thing which a stripe is. These phono-semantic characters trade off some of the meaning of a word for phonetic information, but jia jie, phonetic loaning, took it one step further by making the character for a word entirely based on its pronunciation. In this script, words took the characters of their homophones on as their own. A notable example is wo, which originally was a pictograph for rake, but was later borrowed for its phonological similarity to the first person pronoun I, which is also pronounced wo. A symbol meaning beard was also loaned in this way to provide a character to the word er, meaning an. Much like jia jie, zhuan zhu also contains loaned characters, but it is based on the idea that certain characters are similar in appearance due to historically similar meaning. While modern scholars reject the idea that this script was a systematic way of forming characters, it holds historical significance in stressing etymological fraternity, such as between kao, verify, and lao, old, which had similar pronunciations and likely originated from the same word meaning an elderly person. Though, once again, the significance of this script is disputed and is not well understood. While these derivative cognates may not be too useful in the understanding of Chinese writing, the Liao Shu certainly aids in the comprehension of the world's second most widespread writing system and holds an immeasurable value to the history of the most populous country in the world. Zaijian!